Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. What if we wanted to create a map for a game that is bigger than the screen size? How would we do this? How would we put our player in the center and keep him there? But still be able to move around in the world? That my friends is what we're going to add and change today. Let's go! Before we start, this channel have a Discord server where you can discuss and ask questions about the tutorials of this channel. Or maybe you just want to swing by and say hello. We will also use GitHub throughout this tutorial. There you can check the most recent code, but also code from previous episodes. That comes in handy when something works differently on your side compared to what you see in the episode. And for the people that want to go the extra mile to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee page and also a membership option on YouTube with some basic perks. With that being said, let's get back to the episode. Last episode we began our work with game maps. First we imported an image, the tile atlas to be more precise, and this one is gonna contain all different tiles for building our maps. We then made a new enum that will store this image and others like it later, just like our game characters but for tiles. We also made a new class to hold our level data in a 2D integer array. And with all of this we could then draw a map on our screen. Cool huh? Let's continue on this path by adding bigger maps. There is two things today that we're gonna focus on. The first one is to keep the player locked in the center of the screen. Think of an old Pokemon game or any other game that have the player in the center and then the world moves around or it looks like the world is moving but the player is always in the center of the screen. And there's a few reasons why we wanna do this. The two bigger ones are we are going to make a game on the phone and we have a very limited amount of physical space to not only have our game view but also have our controls on. And those controls are gonna take up a big portion, like this joystick here, is gonna take up like a fourth almost of the game screen. And then we might have some buttons here on the right to emulate some sort of game controller so those are also going to take up some space. So you don't want the player, when you're playing, be behind your finger when you're moving with the joystick or in the corner, etc. It's going to be very difficult to actually see what's going on. And the second reason is to keep all the main important things that's going to happen in the center of the view. So we don't have a lot of action going on in the left corner or the right corner. We want it to happen in the center. It's much easier to see and understand what's going on. So those are the main reasons really to keep the player locked in the center of the screen. And the second thing we're going to focus on today is to make our levels much bigger or at least be able to handle maps that are a lot bigger or even smaller. And I think we're going to start with the second one here to increase the size of our map. That's going to be a rather straightforward process. And we're gonna start in our game panel. We can minimize the project here. And here, where we are creating the 2D integer array with all the sprite IDs where we want them to be drawn, let's just take a portion of it and just copy it. We can copy it twice. So now this is our entire map, but if we run this, there is absolutely no way for us to, well, go down here. It just, we can't, we can't see the rest of the map. We need to be able to do that. And to do this, we're going to go to our game map here class and only store data in our game map and then have some sort of manager that handles all different type of game maps that we have or all the game maps we do have. So we're only storing the data for that map in the, well, game map class. For example, the draw will be moved out, but we can keep it for now. We need to be able to get these IDs though, so a public int get sprite ID. And then of course we need a int x index, int y index, then return sprite IDs y index x index so now we're returning the id for the position that we are given and i think that's it for now 
we do need this draw function or draw method, but not in here. In our environments package, we're going to create a new class and we can call it map manager. And it's going to do exactly that, manage our maps. And we need a constructor here, so public map manager, and then that's it. And we can actually add a temporary method here, so init uh, test map, the one that we are actually creating right away in our game panel. So let's uh, take this, remove it, and place it in the test map method here. And we're not going to call it test map, we're actually going to call it private game map current map. And then later, when we want to switch map, we're going to keep this name and just change the value to a different map. And current map is equal to new game map with this. All right. What else do we need? Well, we need to draw this map now. So public void draw canvas C and Let's go to our game app here. Let's, uh, you know what, let's just copy or remove it from here and replace it here. So sprite IDs dot length, we don't have that sprite ID in this class. It's actually in the game map. So we need to know the length of the array, both in uh, X direction and also Y direction. So let's go to our game app here and add two new getters public int get array with and return sprite IDs zero dot length and one for y direction also. So get array height return sprite IDs dot length. We just take the first index to get the uh, width. And then in our manager here, map manager, we just, we just say current map dot get array height, because that's the first one. And then of course, current map dot get array width. And then to get the sprite IDs, we Go current map dot get sprite id uh, x uh, no not x but i and j and I think that is good enough no errors perfect and in our game panel here we can remove the testing map and just add a private map manager map manager and initialize it here. That's a good one. Map manager equals new map manager. And to draw it, we just say map manager dot draw. Let's give it a try and see if our changes is still working. Yes, they are. So it's the same map, but we have now a map manager that draws whatever map is currently loaded. Perfect. Even though we made our code easier to manage now, we can just add maps of the maps of the maps and switch them however we want. We still can't see the, uh, the part below here or the one above or to the left or the right if it's bigger in, uh, in width as well. So first we want to keep our player in the center. That's a good start. So the player is the X and Y in our game panel, I think. Let's just make sure, yes, when we update the player move, we do all sorts of calculations, then we check what direction, and then we apply it to X and Y. Uh, we're gonna need more floats and integers, but let's just keep them as the player X and Y, so X, or rather player X, and then player Y. Where do we draw the player? Here we do, player X. And then player Y. So there we get that out of the way. And now we need to set the player X and player Y to the center, which is player X equals 
main activity. I think we have it, right? We, we sold, yeah, we got it. Game width, game height, game width divided by two. Player Y is equal to game height divided by two. Because in our previous episode, we stored game width and game height as two static integers here. So we can just call them whenever we want, which is what we're doing here. So if you run this, no, we can't run it because we got errors. And that's because X and Y doesn't exist. I'm just gonna comment that out and see how it looks. All right, so our player is stuck in the middle. It, he can't move or he's animating, but he can't move away from the spot. He's uh, frozen in, in place, which is what we want. So now comes the question, how do we keep the player in the center but still move him? Like the map needs to move, but the player stays still. How are we going to do that? And we're gonna do this with something called a camera or well, everyone knows what a camera is, but in this context, it's just a view of the world that's moving. So think of it as the world is static, but the view or the camera above it is moving. So it's not the world that is moving, it's just the camera that's watching the world that is moving. So for us, our camera is our screen, or rather it's the illusion of the camera is our screen. So whatever we are seeing is the camera that's looking at the world. It may sound complicated, but it's actually very simple. It's just a offset for X and Y that's going to change when we're moving the player. And that's change or that offset, the camera, is simply going to be applied for everything that we're drawing. The position of everything stays the same, but whenever we draw it, we apply this offset and now we have moved our world in whatever direction we wanted. So all the calculations is actually already done in our game panel class. Right here, we have all of it already done. So instead of moving the player in the direction we wanna move, we're gonna move the camera in the opposite direction of the player trying to move. So up here, we're gonna add two floats, private float camera x, camera y. And these are the two floats that's going to be applied to everything besides the player that we wanna draw. And of course, we don't wanna move the user interface, we, wanna, we just wanna move the world, the objects, the enemies, or rather draw them by, with this camera x and camera y. So let's go down here and say, uh, and uncomment these two and say camera X plus equals speed, camera Y plus equals Y speed. All right, let's see what happens. Nothing is going to happen because we don't use camera X or camera Y. And in our update here, where we update the plur, uh, player move, we're gonna take that and we're gonna move it to the very top. And then we have the skeleton code here. But yeah, we're starting by moving the player or the camera now. Uh, we're gonna keep the name for now. Then we wanna say map manager dot, and we don't have a method for that. So let's add a public void set camera values and we need a float camera x camera y a float may help as well and up here we oops we add a private float camera x camera y and then just say this dot camera x equals camera x this dot camera y equals camera y and when we draw it, we simply add this to the X and Y. So I da da da, and then plus camera X. And then here, plus camera Y. Minimize that a little bit, and then we test it and see what happens when we try to move. And we have an error because I didn't call this method yet. 
set camera values, camera X, camera Y. All right, what about now? Long succeeded. Beautiful. All right. Well, this isn't. <laughs> it's uh, Michael Jackson moving, and the skeleton is super fast. So the world is moving in the wrong direction, or rather, the world is staying the, sa the same place, but our camera is not moving in the direction opposite of the player. I knew that was going to happen, but I just wanted to show it. So when we apply this, we go negative one or times negative one. So we flip it negative one like so. And now we give it a try again. And we should have some changes. So moving up, moving down. Hmm. Looks right. Moving to the left. Moving to the right, a little lag, but I'm recording and it's an emulator, but whatever. And I'm out in the void. But as you can see, the skeleton is not having a great day. That's because we don't apply this camera X and Y to the skeleton. So let's do that. And that we are doing in our da -da -da -da, draw method. Draw method. Where's the draw method? Uh, skeleton, da, 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 skeleton plus, plus camera X, and then plus camera Y. Let's try this again, and let's see how it works. So I'm moving down. The skeleton is moving. Yeah, looks like he's just moving around doing his own business, regardless of what direction I am or the player is moving. So yeah, he's moving out, left, yeah, looks good. Perfect. But we want to fix this. We don't want to be able to walk out into the void. So we need some way of stopping the player from moving past this. Let's, uh, let's see how we can do that. And that won't be too much of a problem either. In our map manager, we're gonna add a method here, public boolean, and it's gonna check whether or not we can move where we're trying to move. And for now, all tiles are going to be walkable. There is no tile that's gonna block us, there is no tile that's a rock or a wall or whatever. We can walk on all tiles, but we cannot go into the void outside the map, so to speak. So public boolean can move here and this one is going to take in a float x and a float y. And this x and y is going to be the player, the camera and also the change that we are trying to apply to, well, the world and everything. So for before we move anywhere, we check if we can move there in the first place. So first we want to make sure that if, or we can keep it up here, if x is less than 0 or y is less than 0, then return false. Because we're trying to check in the sprite array and anything less than 0 is outside the sprite array, meaning the map. So if you're trying to go to the very left or to the very top of the map and then into the void that would be less than zero in X and Y respectively. So right off the bat, if it's less than zero, nah, don't do it, we can't. Then we wanna check if we are trying to step out of the opposite direction. So if we take X for now, the width, so less than zero, that's a no-go, we can't go there, return false. What if we're trying to move to the right of the map, just outside the maximum width? Well, that's also the void, so that's also a no-go, and the same for y. And how do we calculate that? And we can do some calculation here, like divide it by the sprite uh, sprite size, etc, etc. But right now, all tiles are walkable, so we're going to make the most simplest way possible. And let's just check, is x, if you're using x here, is it between 0 and the maximum width? And the maximum width, we can actually add a getter for. So public int get max width current map. 
very descriptive and it's going to return current map dot get array with times game constants dot sprite dot size done now we have the current width or the maximum width for the map in pixels and then we add another one public int get max height height current map return current map dot get array height dot uh, not dot but times game constant sprites and size and then now in here we simply check if x is more than or equal to so we can be zero because we start drawing in the top left corner which is zero zero so yes we can stand on zero zero but we can't stand on uh, let's say it goes to 100 we can't stand on 100 because that would be outside so it would be so the map would be zero to 99 if it was 100 in width so that's why we're checking if it's more than or equal to uh, the maximum width so get max width current map or y is more than or equal to get max height current map return false and if none of those are true then we return true because we can move there we are within the bounds so to speak and now let's go back to our game panel and right here where we are applying the change we want to hold off for a second before we do that change and here we can add two new floats just to make it easier for us so float delta x which is going to be the change we are trying to apply to well the world so we're gonna take this times negative one da, da, da. should we keep it yeah let's keep it for now uh, and then say delta x and the same goes for y delta y is equal to this and then just delta y but that didn't change anything we just added two new floats and the same so here we're gonna have the check so if map manager dot can move here so what do we need we need the player x or uh, player x plus the current camera x and then plus delta x and then the same player y plus camera y plus delta y if that is the case we can move there we then apply the change if we can't move there the end player is just going to animate but the camera x and y does not change it stays the same now there's a problem here we can try and see if we get some bugs that we didn't really know could happen so i'm just moving here and just running okay that looks good i can't move past that that didn't seem to stop me okay that's weird let's move down here a little bit and see what happens and all of a sudden i stopped okay that's weird and let's go to the right here and see what happens okay that's weird and that has to do with that we are switching or setting the camera to the negative or we're moving the camera opposite of what the player is trying to move so that the illusion of the player is moving is happening and the values here is going to be opposite of what we are trying to actually change so if i am moving to the left player x stays the same the camera x is going to increase because i need to move everything to the right so that goes up so player x is 960 plus whatever this is let's say 500 and then the new change that we're trying to apply which is also going to be you know positive because we're trying to move everything even further to the right but we're trying to actually check the tile that is to the left so all of these values need to go times negative one 
again, or not again, but we need to flip them back to uh, opposite of the camera, which is the actual player. So now they are default, so to speak. Just the camera and also the change we're trying to apply. So we take a look at that. Camera times negative one, delta times negative one. Camera times negative one, delta times negative one. All right, let's see if that did it. Start it up. The width is going to be the same because we never changed the size of the cat or in the width. Yeah, let's see if I move up here. Boink. Couldn't move past that. All right. Let's see if we are. Well, I moved further down now, but we moved into the void. But technically, the player is still on. Or position wise the player is still in the map because we're drawing from the top left but we need to fix that in the next step but otherwise we can now move everywhere on our map all right so let's take a look at how we can solve the width and height issue here that is also going to be fairly simple all we need is a uh, integer here there's going to be a p width for player width is equal to game constants dot sprite dot size because the player is the same size as well the tiles and then p height is equal to game constants dot spr not class but sprite dot size and if we are moving to the left then we don't need to check for width so if the x speed and the x speed is where we're checking if we're moving to the left or whatever but uh, yeah, if x speed is more than, no, not more than, but less than or equal to zero, then we can say p width is equal to zero because we're moving to the left. So x speed is negative. And then y speed less than or equal to zero, p height equals zero. So if we're moving to the left, we don't need to check for uh, width, only if we're moving to the right. And the same goes for y. So for x here, we just add p width at the end. And the same here, plus p height at the end. And we try this one more time. Run to the right, because that where the is where the issue were. And we can't move through it. Beautiful and up no changes what about left should be no changes here as well nope and just the last one to check is going down and we're stopped beautiful so our bounce check works just like it's supposed to so yeah this is really good let's see if we can increase the game in uh, with as well so let's go to our map manager where we have our map and let's just take let's take those and add them one more and then copy this one over all of these oh damn hold on there we go that's two lines something like that it's not gonna look great but it's going to work and then I remove the last comma I think this is higher than it was from the very start let's give it a try and see what happens so yeah I can move the map down and I can move the map right and it continues to just go 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 and I can move to the left I hope uh, da, 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 da. yeah and the last check is of course and that stops too all right beautiful but what if we have a map that's smaller than the one we had at the very start let's see here i need to add one of those that one and i'm just gonna add five six maybe give that a try all right, so now the map is so small that the player doesn't even start inside the map or the map doesn't start underneath the player. And that is something that we can change later. 
I'm not gonna. We're not gonna go into like spawning the level in the center of the world or the player in the center of the world because maybe the player gotta spawn in a corner and so on. But yeah, if you wanna play around with this, there's some like default size that you need to start with, and I think one more line at least. And then maybe two more in width. So something like this, I think is gonna be just uh, just perfect. Let's remove that one. Add one more, remove the last comma, run it now. So yeah, that's pretty much the bare minimum we can start with. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 in width and 3, 7 in height. That's the minimum or the smallest we can start with. But the collision detection or bounce check works just as well on a smaller map as it did on a bigger map which is perfect. All right, it's looking better and better. Right now we got no special tiles or anything. They are all walkable, but later on there will be a few different types such as solid ones and non-walkable ones, like rocks or walls, for example. But for now, this is some good progress for today. If you enjoyed it or learned something new today, hit that subscribe button and like the video. There are a lot more episodes to come in this tutorial. Until the next video comes, Take care now and have a wonderful day. Bye.